COP26 ended with the Glasgow Climate Pact. Here's where it succeeded and failed some are calling it a success, others a failure, and many say it's something in between. Here's what's in it so you can decide for yourself, first ever mention of fossil fuels, with a lot of caveats the agreement makes unprecedented mention of the role of fossil fuels in the climate crisis. That's something that even the landmark Paris Agreement was unable to achieve. The Glasgow Climate Pact calls for the phasing down of unabated coal and inefficient fossil fuel subsidies. The language was originally stronger but was watered down several times. It looked like it might even have been scrapped near the end when India, with Iran's support, made clear they wouldn't give their blessings on it. The pact requires all 197 parties to agree on the final text. COP26 President Alok Sharma was seen canvassing opinion on the floor of the plenary room to see if others would support the change to essentially save the article. When asked for her opinion on the whole agreement, even Greenpeace International Executive Director Jennifer Morgan saw the inclusion of coal as a win for the climate. It's meek, it's weak and the 1.5C goal is only just alive, but a signal has been sent that the era of coal is ending. And that matters, she said. Sharma faced questions over the way he handled the last-minute change, for which he later apologized. This will not bring us closer to 1.5 but make it more difficult to reach it said Swiss Environment Minister Simonetta Somarug, receiving a long round of applause. But Indian Environment Minister Bhupinder Yadav, who had opposed the language, said that it would be difficult for his country to end coal use and fossil fuel subsidies while it tries to address poverty. How can anyone expect developing countries to make promises about phasing out coal and fossil fuel subsidies, he asked. Subsidies provide much needed social security and support he said, giving the example of how India uses subsidies to provide liquefied natural gas to low-income households. Perhaps the most consequential change was language that requests parties to come to COP27 next year in Egypt with updated plans on how to slash greenhouse gas emissions by 2030. Under the Paris Agreement, countries were only obliged to update their goals by 2025. The latest landmark climate science report published by the UN in August, called for emissions to roughly halve by 2030 and for the world to reach net zero by mid-century to have any hope in keeping global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. The question now is, will countries actually do it? By agreeing this emergency package they have responded to rising climate damage with an action plan to keep 1.5C within reach said Nick Maybe, co-founder and executive director of the E3G climate think tank. But the real task begins now as every country must go home and deliver on their Glasgow promises. Rich countries agreed more than 10 years ago to transfer $100 billion a year to developing nations to help their transformation to low-carbon economies, and adapt to the climate crisis. Adaptation can involve anything from building sea walls to prevent flooding, to moving communities back from the coast and retrofitting homes to better withstand extreme weather events. The Glasgow Climate Pact includes a doubling of money for adaptation by 2025, from 2019 levels, which is progress in this area. But the $100 billion target is still off track, likely to only be met by 2023, as a COP26 presidency report found. There are also questions over whether developed nations will maintain that level of funding annually. It is inexcusable that developed countries failed to meet their commitment to deliver $100 billion annually starting in 2020, even as they provide hundreds of billions of dollars in subsidies for fossil fuels said Arne Dasgupta, president and CEO of the World Resources Institute. It is significant that the final outcome at COP26 puts developed countries on the hook to report on their progress towards the $100 billion goal. Countries also made headway toward developing a new financial goal that goes beyond 2025. Nations also agreed to at least double funding for adaptation by 2025, implying at least $40 billion, which is very important progress. No liability fund to pay for climate crisis destruction This is a point with which many developing and climate-vulnerable countries will be going home disappointed. 
there were high hopes that a dedicated fund would be set up to pay for the damage and destruction the climate crisis brings to the hardest hit countries. The idea was that the rich nations would pay into it, and if a country experiences an event like floods that destroy homes, this money could help them rebuild. This is called loss and damage in climate speak. The agreement does recognize the importance of loss and damage and agrees to boost technical assistance to affected countries. But instead of agreeing to a dedicated fund, it calls for more dialogue, meaning an actual fund may years away, if it happens at all. U.S. climate envoy John Kerry confirmed after the decision that his country was against such a fund for now, while the European Union had previously said it would not support it. A proposed Glasgow loss and damage facility to channel new and additional funds for loss and damage failed to materialize after being blocked by richer nations including the United States, Australia and the European Union Cletus said. The final COP26 decision is overwhelmingly compromised by countries that have contributed most greatly to the climate crisis and once again denies justice for climate-vulnerable developing countries. It took six years but a Paris rulebook is finally finished. Almost if there's any sign of how slow progress by consensus can be, it was only on Saturday that the world agreed to the outstanding rules of the 2015 Paris Agreement. There had been concern over the creation of carbon emission markets, known as Article 6 which is so technical that the world couldn't agree on its wording and substance over the last five years. There were concerns about a loophole that could have allowed some countries to double count their carbon credits. And that would be disastrous as the world would soon lose track of how much greenhouse gas is actually being removed or offset, and sold on markets. One way to offset greenhouse gases is by paying countries with significant forest cover to not log their trees, or to plant more of them. Trees can absorb and lock away large amounts of carbon. Cutting them down or burning them releases carbon dioxide into the air. A country could also pay another to build a wind farm, for example, instead of a coal or oil plant. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe.